This is just in. Canada is not a free country. Did you know that? From scandals left and right, high taxes everywhere, limited opportunity to grow your wealth, we're living more under what seems to be like Castro's rule and potentially Castro's son at the top. But seriously, I'm reporting on the mafia of Canada and how they're getting away with everything that they are. Whether it's China or Saudi Arabia, money laundering, buying real estate in Canada to wash their money, we all know that play. But Forget that. The real corruption is actually happening on our own soil. Let's break it down. So the reality is that Justin Trudeau is getting funding from really sketchy sources. And this has been documented so many times, it's nothing new. But whenever Pierre Polyev calls him out on it, the fact that he's so in with Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum, he doesn't really ever have an answer. I mean, it's clearly documented that Chinese investors are exiting their country, exiting their money at the very least, and buying real estate specifically in BC, Vancouver, and Toronto as well. Now, this is having some pressures on the housing market, for sure. Not as overblown as everybody's making it in the newspapers that all these Chinese buyers are buying all the real estate and, and the, the homegrown Canadians can't. Okay, it's not that. It's like less than 1% of the housing market. Less than 1%. That's already been documented is from foreign buyers. However, they're buying the most luxurious properties, whether it's commercial, industrial. Yeah, no one's talking about that. And yeah, sometimes residential. And when it comes to residential, we all know this as well, is that they're leaving them empty. So they buy these nice condos, these nice condo towers, the whole friggin' thing, and they're leaving the properties empty. Why? I've already broken this down many times on this channel, but it's a store of value for their money. Now, as a real estate investor, as an entrepreneur, I totally get why they're doing this. China is a very corrupt country. It's hard to make money in there, and it's almost impossible to take your money out of there unless you're buying assets. Sometimes the Chinese government will let certain people buy assets. And what are they buying? They're buying real estate. Why? Real estate investing is one of the best assets of all times. That's been proven. The vast majority of millionaires have done so through real estate investing, and the, mass, and the vast majority of billionaires with a B have done done so through private equity, aka owning businesses. So you got all these Chinese millionaires exiting their money because China is corrupt. The economy makes no sense. It crashes, it booms. It crashes, it's too volatile. So these Chinese investors understand, hey, the power of Canadian real estate. What's going on over there? Canada's crazy with their real estate. It's booming all the time. It's a nice, stable market. So they're buying quality properties in BC and Ontario. And what are they doing essentially? They're washing their money. Why? We know that. The property's empty. They're not renting it out. They're not adding to the housing supply market. They're just holding it. It's a store of value. It's a way to wash the money. Now, I say this because we're in an enormous housing crisis. We need houses like crazy. We need more supply to come online. We are under millions and millions of properties. We need to build about five to seven million more homes just to bring the housing market back into normality, a neutral market. So you think in a housing crisis with everything going on, Saudi Arabian and Chinese millionaires buying all these quality real estate pieces, you think the government would do something like, I don't know, maybe say, no, you can't ever do that, not allowed. And again, it would do nothing for the housing market. As a real estate investor, as a realtor in the market, I can tell you right now, even if that did happen, which would be very extreme policy, by, by the way, it wouldn't do anything to the housing market for Canadians. But at least it would help with optics, right? Maybe, maybe it would help him get re-election. That's what a smart politician would do anyway. Zero really consequence to the actual economy from blocking these investments, but you look so good to the voters. It's kind of like a win-win. Why isn't he doing it? Ah, after my long sigh, maybe it's because he can't. Maybe because he's bought and paid for and has received so much money from Chinese lobbyists from Saudi Arabia that he can't do that. Because if he does, he's not getting any more money for his campaigning, for his funding, for whatever the hell he's doing that we don't know about. Ah, and that's where the bought and paid for politicians screw everybody in the ass because they can't do anything to actually help the country and help the people because they're bond paid for. Now, forget about foreign invaders for a sec, invaders for a second. Let's talk about the mafia on Canadian soil and what's going on in New Brunswick. How this one family, the Irving family, literally like owns everything in New Brunswick. Pretty much the whole east side of Canada, actually. When it comes to the telecom industry, the forest industry, the media industry out east and across Canada, the local press and newspaper Dude, this family owns like everything. It's very impressive. As an entrepreneur, I tip my hat. But the unintended or maybe intended consequence is that this family owns everything. They set the rules. 
because of the laws and regulation in Canada and how hard it is to start a business and there's no incentivization for other entrepreneurs to enter the space, who's going to go take on the Irving family and create some competition for the forest industry, for the press industry, for the telecom industry out there? You're starting from, de- from down here. This family is way the hell up here. You ain't touching them. And that's the biggest problem with Canada is that we have so many large companies, Loblaws, Bell, Rogers, the banking industry, how, how there's only like four banks that own everything. There's no competition. These few players set the rules and it is what it is. And if you don't like it, fuck off. That's why your cell phone bill and the internet bill in Canada is the highest in the world. Dude, the world. Did you realize that? The Yes, the world. We pay the most for internet and phone in the entire planet. It's crazy. Why, why is that? Why is, well, we only have two companies and they're pretty much the same. Now, I know what you're thinking and I know where you're going with this probably and it's kind of where I'm going with this as well. And it's that, forget Canada. I'm just going to move to the U.S. It's close. It's right below us. I'm going to spend you know, my time down there. Oh, is that what you want to do? Ah, you don't think Trudeau thought about that? You don't think the GTA, Toronto specifically, has thought, has thought about that? Well, here's the thing. When you leave the country for more than six months and one day, in Toronto anyway, for now, you get slapped with a vacant home tax. Oh, and if you think this law is only going to be Toronto, no. Doug Ford is already talking about it for Ontario. A conservative premier talking about this crap? Not surprising, anyway. And Trudeau's for sure gonna put this federal-wide, especially if he wins the next election, that there's gonna be a vacant home tax. That if you leave this country for six months and one day, you're gonna get penalized for leaving that home empty because we have a housing crisis going on. If, if, if you're gonna be gone that long, at least rent it out. It's my primary residence, dude. I don't wanna rent it out. I wanna come back in six months. And if this squatter loser is still sitting there and with the laws we have in Ontario and across Canada, they can just like own my house and take it over. I can't kick them out legally. It's insane. The landlord tenant board rules in Canada are insane, but they know that. They know that and they don't care. They're going to penalize you anyway. So in Ontario right now, the vacant home tax is 3% in Toronto. So if you have a million dollar home and you leave it empty for six months in one day, you get hit with a $30,000 fee. Now to a Canadian like us, that's going to sting. That's going to suck to a rich millionaire, Saudi prince, Chinese investor, Chinese millionaire, an investor from India. Dude, they don't care. They don't fucking care. They don't care, dude, about the chump change tax. It doesn't mean anything for them. They have a long-term vision of buying this property, letting it sit, letting it appreciate the way real estate does in Canada for the next 10, 20 years. See, this is the thing. All these millionaires from other countries, way smarter than us. See, they think about their money in generations. We think about a three to five year investment when we invest in real estate and we think we're cool. These guys think about 10, 20, 30 years and passing that ownership of that property off to their children. They think in generations. You, you think they care about 30 grand a year? Dude, this property is probably going to appreciate 100 grand a year consistently for the next 30 years. They don't care. They don't care. So what's the solution? This channel is all about solutions. How do we fix this country? How do we get more of a level playing field? Well, the reality is we need more competition. We need more capitalism in this country. Now, Pierre Polyev seems to have a good head on his shoulders. Maybe, just maybe, if and when he wins, he's going to start changing things over. He's going to ax the carbon tax. It's going to incentivize more businesses to want to come in and do business. And, and that's the biggest problem right now, specifically to the housing industry, which is my specialty, what I can really teach on, is that I don't want to sound too narcissistic, but you know I'm pretty well known and high up in the real estate industry across Canada. I know a lot of the big players. And here's the thing. A lot of the big guys that I've been running with for the past couple of years, we've been investing in Canada pretty heavily. You know, I used to own 150 properties. 50 of the 150 were single family properties all in Kitchener, Waterloo, rental properties. I sold them all. Bye-bye. And a lot of my friends and a lot of these big guys I know, they're doing the exact same thing. And even on bigger volumes. I mean, some of these investors own hundreds of properties or even thousands of doors via multifamily buildings and they're selling them all and they're going to the US. They're going to buy multifamily properties in Georgia, in Tennessee. They're buying single family properties in Texas, in Florida. Why? The rules are much better. The regulations are way better for tenancy. If a tenant doesn't pay rent in these states, they're gone. There's no appeals. There's no court. It, it, it doesn't take nine to 12 months like it does in Canada. It's like 30 days and you're gone. And prices are so much lower. Taxes are zero, by the way, in some of these states. So they're making more money. They're getting an instant 30 to 50% raise. If you think of it that way, 
So we're losing a lot of the big investors in the housing industry to America because there's more capitalism going on there. That's just the housing industry. Now think about the telecom industry. Think about manufacturing. Think about every other business, the banking industry. The banking industry is a perfect example. I mean, in the US, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of smaller regional banks fighting for people's business to give them a mortgage, to give them a car loan, competitive rates because they all got to compete against each other. In Canada, we have four or five big banks. And that's it. They set the rules and that's it. There's no competition. So that's why we need more Canada. We need more competition. So the next time you vote, that's how you want to do something. Think about that in your mind when you're voting. But here's the reality, okay? Is Pierre Polyev really going to change Canada around and flip it over in four or eight years? Let's say he's the perfect politician and does exactly what he says he's going to do. You think he's going to change your life? I hope so. I hope so. I hope he does turn Canada around, but I think it's going to take decades, decades of consistent capitalistic type leading, which means it's going to have to be a conservative government. I don't want to wait fucking decades. I don't know about you, but I'm not waiting decades for Pierre Polyev to save my life. So I'm doing it on my own. And how am I doing it? I'm investing in real estate. I'm investing in the stock market. But real estate, number one, I'm centering my businesses around that. I'm buying quality properties with my partners. And again, no longer in Canada. It doesn't make sense anymore. I've owned a lot of real estate in Canada. It, it doesn't make sense. So if you want to learn how to own real estate in America as a Canadian, I can tell you it is so easy, much easier than you're thinking. It's not complicated at all. And by the way, I got a free course in, in the description below where you can find out how to do that. Check it out. It's pretty cool. I'm going to tell you all the secrets about it. But that's what I got for you today, guys. That's what I got for you. Hit the subscribe button. Hit like. I'll see you in the next rant.